Hello. He- Hello, everybody. I'm Bart Robley, and this is my oh, buddy Chip over Bird. right. I always point the wrong direction. It's always backwards. There's Chip over there. He's in Here's Tucson. Bart. <laughs> I'm in Ontario, California. Chip is in Tucson. It's just the two of us today. We are the lone wolves today. Our the lone uh, wolves. <laughs> our buddies uh, Jeremy Steinkohler. Hey, get, you're going to get your dog over there, Howl. Will he yeah, howl with you? Dog going. He's sleeping right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not the lone wolves. We got we got we got one dog back there with us. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> anyway, so Jeremy today, we want to wish him the best, man. He's got COVID. Yeah. He got you know he's not feeling well at all. I talked to him this morning. Poor guy's really sick. And then uh, and then we talk. Uh, Rick is uh, down in Florida, and he's dealing with some stuff with his mom down there in Florida, helping her out with a few things. So uh, it's love just a two- Rick. Yes, much love to Rick and his family and his mom down in Florida. So they'll be joining us again next week. Um, so when we realized that it was just going to be Chip and I, uh, we decided to do uh, and talk about a subject that uh, we're both uh, very in tune with. And we're, we're very uh, much close to both of us, but it's also a touchy subject. Uh, especially when you're dealing with with uh, drum students and stuff like that, but we would be remiss if we didn't talk about it, and that is addiction issues. Um, as you know, in the music business, it is actually just you know filled with uh, addiction issues. You hear the stories all the time, and a lot of uh, it's unfortunate that a lot of people have succumbed to those issues. Um, very talented people. And I think that uh, the reason we wanted to talk about it is to avoid the pitfalls thereof. And uh, so when Chip and I got on here a little bit before we went live, it was like, well, do we want to talk about this or do we not want to talk about this? And it was, <laughs> we were both like, well, we're scared to death, but what the heck? It's kind of like playing a drum solo. You're scared to death, but you just jump in there and, and, and you know, go swinging and ducking. So anyway, I'm going to throw it over to Chip. Chip's got uh, some insight on this, as do I. And uh, now we got Odin barking. See, look, there you go. We got, Sorry, we got. O- There's a truck that he hates, and it comes by every time, and he just can't stand the mechanical noises. Oh, dude, I I hate trucks too. My my dog, uh, my dog's Chloe and Whiskey, absolutely go nuts when uh, when the trash can comes or the trash man comes well, by. Or- while he's while he's barking, why don't you talk about what? What is addiction? Well, addiction is is just that when you can't, you know, with when when you are addicted to a substance, whether it be alcohol or drugs or, you know, you know, there's so many addictions out there, smoking cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, uh, there's sexual addiction. There's all these things that people succumb to and and really, you know, ruin ruin their lives and uh or in their lives and uh it leads to many unbelievably unpleasant things it leads to depression it leads to anxiety a lot of people mm-hmm. think of anxiety as something that is uh you know oh gosh i'm just anxious i'm nervous like a second ago i said something about a drum solo you know i'm anxious mm-hmm. about that drum solo but anxiety is much deeper than that it goes really deep within and it can be very tormenting to us and it can be very uh you know, it can really hurt our daily lives. But addiction is anything where you have a substance that you just can't, you feel that you can't live without it. And yeah. uh, it takes over your life. It takes over every aspect of of your thought process. And um, and sometimes I think, I think people who are artists think that they need these things to be artistically creative. And I don't think that's true. I think the polar opposite is true of that because once you get clean, I think the creativity really flows much better. And that's my yeah. personal opinion. But anyway, Chip, what are, what are your thoughts now that Odin is no longer well, wanting to eat yeah, the truck? Yeah, now that he's not throwing a fit over here and, and ruining my show. <laughs> so, you know, addiction, This uh, the topic itself, it's really heavy. It affects a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of people that struggle with it and don't know that they're struggling with it. Like they don't realize that they're addicted to it. Like when I was younger in, uh, in high school, I watched my brother drink and he was the cool guy. 
and I always wanted to be the cool guy. I wanted to be like him. So I started drinking when I could. And one thing led to another. The next thing I knew, I was, I kind of had to keep drinking and I couldn't stop, you know, and I didn't realize that I was addicted to it, but that's exactly how it happened. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a heavy subject and it's, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to really define for myself. I know what, what addiction is, but like for other people who are watching, it could be anything, you know what I mean? It could be gambling. There's, there's all kinds of forms of addiction that can destroy you. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I was, I, I, I kind of went through the same thing. Um, not so much with my brother, but with my father, my dad was somebody that I really looked up to. Um, and, uh, and he, and, and I don't want to throw my dad under the bus, you know, but he, he, you know, ever since I was a kid, he drank, he always, you know, always had a beer. And so if dad had a beer, I had to have a beer, you know, and it was, it was one of those things that, and then being in a, you know, being a musician and touring and all that stuff, it just goes hand in hand. It's just, you know, yeah, there's a lot this- of, there's a lot of rampant addiction and, and uh, alcoholism in the music business. There just oh, cool. is. Yeah, completely. And, uh, and, you know, woke up this morning and got myself a beer. That's, you know, that's a song that, Your you know, song, yeah. yeah. And you know who that's, a, you know who that line's about? No. That's about Alice Cooper. Oh, really? Yeah. Jim Morrison wrote that, that line about Alice Cooper. Yeah. I woke up this morning and got myself a beer. But, I didn't um, know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I heard, I, Cooper, I, I heard Alice Cooper is sober. He is. He's been sober for many years. He's been sober yeah. for many years. And so I think that, uh, for me, it was the same way. It, it kind of snuck up on me and you don't really realize it until it has a hold of you. And then for me, I thought, well, it's manageable. You know, I haven't, I haven't had a, I, you know, haven't had a DUI or I haven't gotten a car wreck or, you know, I had all these justifications, but I really, you yeah. know, yeah, exactly. And, and as being in a, being in a band, you know, that that's part of the, for me, it was part of the gig. It wasn't the main thing to the gig at all. The music was always the main thing, but you get up in the morning, you have a cup of coffee while well, you're on the road. So, you know, to 10 o'clock, it's, you know, it's noon back East and we're on the West coast. So I'm going to go ahead and have a beer and then it starts. And then you have a few beers when you get to the gig at load in at sound check before the gig, then after the gig. And mm-hmm. it's just always there. It's something that's always there. And before you know it, before the end of the day, you've gone through a case of beer and, 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 you know, the day is, is shot. And, and it, you don't really realize how bad it is affecting you mentally, physically, musically, and creatively, you know, yeah. and, uh, we can see these things in the music business around, uh, you know, all around the music business. And Chip, I don't know, you, you said something about your brother, but alcoholism is also very hereditary. And Yeah, my father was an alcoholic. Yeah. And he, he drank, but he was one of the functioning ones. He never got a DUI, and it was mainly the, the family that suffered, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that was the, that was the same for me. It wasn't, you know, I, well, for me, everybody on, in my family, on both sides, my mom and my dad, um, both sides of the family were very heavy drinkers. And, uh, um, some of them, you know, obviously still are. Um, so I got it from both sides of the family and, and it did squash down my, my creativity a lot. And, and I was like you said, your dad was. I was a functioning alcoholic. You know, I, I I was able to make it through the daily life. I'd make it through the gig. I didn't blow the gig. I didn't, you know, I didn't get a DUI. I didn't any of that. But the people around me were hurt by it. You know, my my yeah. family members, my wife. You know, people were hurt by it. And so I came to the realization uh, a number of years ago. Uh, about three and a half years ago that I had to stop drinking and it was tough. It was really tough. Um, but I made it through it and I don't, I don't talk about it a lot with, I obviously don't talk about it with my students a lot. So coming out here and talking about it on the deck is, uh, it's, it's something that I feel that needs to be talked about because again, what I said at the beginning of the show, 
I would be remiss if I didn't tell people, especially young people, to avoid those pitfalls. You know, stay yeah, away from it. You stay don't away need from it. it. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Chip? Staying away from it. What are your thoughts on it? Well, staying away from it, man. You know, I, I, it took me down a road where I uh, ended up not playing drums anymore. Mm -hmm. I was just caught up in the substances and uh, I couldn't, I couldn't face life. And it was just all about getting more, getting more, getting more until I was actually suicidal with my face in the carpet with the hair, you know, the blood snot and the tears. And I reached out and I cried out to God. I said, God, help me. And then I stood up and I got this guy's card and I called this guy named Jeff Wilson. I asked him for help. I said, it's, it's my name. My real name's Chris. I was like, my, it's Chris and I need help. Please help me. And he said, do you got any drugs in the house? I said, yep, get rid of them and call me back. And he hung up. And so I got rid of him. And then I called him back and he said, you got any booze in the house? I said, yep. He said, get rid of it and call me back. And so I got rid of it and called him back. And he had instructions for me from day one after I reached out. So, I mean, anybody that's dealing with addiction right now, I would say the first thing is to reach out and ask for help because there's all kinds of help out there. There's all kinds of hotlines and all kinds of programs and all kinds of people just waiting to help you if you're suffering from addiction. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's deep, man. And, you know, um, I, <clears throat> you said something a minute ago, Chip, you were talking about your brother and he was a cool guy, you know, and, um, and I, I kind of echoed that I, I, uh, you know, I felt that same way about my, about my father, you know, and I think that, um, you kind of have to not look at it that way. You know, it, it, yeah. it, it's not the, it's not the cool thing to do. I know it's, I know it's really fun to talk about and it's funny to, you know, funny to see the drunk guy and maybe it's fun the first couple of times to be that person. But then pretty soon when you're, you know, you're waking up hung over in a hotel room when you're on the road with the band and you're just feeling like crap, it's just not, you know, and then you got to play that night and well, we'll have hair of the dog. And, and then it just, you know, it spirals, you know, it really does. Yeah, it's a cycle. It is. And so I guess, uh, you know, to stay away from it is always easier said than done because it is so. Well, staying away from it, we got to think about, you know, all the drawbacks and all the, all the bad things about it. It's just, it's loaded with bad things. There's, there's no good aspect side of it. You know what I mean? Other than that uh, illusion of feeling better, there's nothing good that comes from addiction. You know what I mean? It's always like a bad thing. It's it's the problem. You know what I mean? And what the problem encapsulates is is not only are you harming yourself, you're harming people around you. You know, you're letting people down, and and it's it's just a bad thing. And you know, after I got after I got help, I ended up starting a career in drumming. You know what I mean? It was like I had nothing and then I got sober, clean and sober. And then I was able to actually start showing up and go to auditions and, and, and working as a drummer. So, you know, it's it, there's nothing but bad things that come from addiction. And the way to stay away from it is to be aware of your surroundings and, and be able to say no, to be able to put something more important in your life and to focus on your priorities rather than the drawbacks of addiction. Right. Now you said that you had completely quit drumming when you were mm -hmm. addicted. Right. Yeah. And so you, you didn't have a towards drum set bottom. or anything or, or what happened? That was towards my bottom. My drum set was dust on it in the room next to me in my dad's house and I had nothing left. Wow. I completely wow. stopped drumming. It Man. wasn't until about nine months sober that I talked to my, uh, my friend, Jeff, who is, who is, I called him my sponsor. But he was my friend and uh, helped me get through the steps. And he he said, your best work is ahead of you. You know what I mean? You can play again. You'll be able to do all the things you ever dreamt of. If you can stay sober and clean, you'll be able to make it like that. And he was right. Do you feel – so so you feel like when you were sober that you – I mean, you're not playing, so this is the most obvious thing in the world to say. But you've lost – all creativity you lost I all lost passion everything. for music 
right. I lost all my passion for music. I lost everything. Wow. And did you think that, like, did you think you just couldn't play anymore? Well, you know, before it got really bad, I remember playing with a metal band called Innovator. And I remember getting drunk during the practices and thinking to myself that I'm way, I'm doing, man, I'm killing it, man, I'm killing it. You know what I mean? And, and listening back to the tapes, it was like I was not killing it. Yeah. I was not being creative. I was not anywhere near what I thought it was. Right. So I right. felt like I needed it to be creative. Yeah. And what happened is it ended up taking away my creativity. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I, I went through that same thing, too, where I'd, I would be I never I mean, I never quit playing. Um, so I'm really, first of all, sorry that that happened to you. You know, I'm, I, all right, I'm very, man. You know, it's just part of my story. Right. And I, I'm very glad to see you now. I mean, we were saying, well, I said I shared this with Chip before we went on, you know, Chip and I are good friends and we met through drumming, you know. And so just the fact that, you know. I look at Chip as I, I look up to Chip as like one of my drumming heroes. You know, he's he's my friend. But man, I watch the guy play. I'm like, gosh, man, look at that guy go. You know, yeah. and uh, and uh, you know, I've looked at I, I I've I've uh, we've been good friends because of that. So your sobriety made you and I friends, and I just love that. Um, I didn't I didn't quit playing. I was I was still playing, and 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 I definitely don't blame being in a band uh, or being a musician. Uh, on being an alcoholic or or anything like that that was my own vices and the things that i dealt with um it, so uh, in my life and how i dealt with like negative stuff in my life you know i had, had a lot of you know negative things happen to me when i was when i was younger and i dealt with it through drinking and mm -hmm. i dealt with it because also you know like you said i want to be the cool guy i want to be like my dad i want to be like everybody around me and then once I got sober, I realized that the people around me that I thought, and my dad was super cool. I mean, my dad was a great guy. So I'm not, I'm not knocking him when I say this, but I look at around at the people around me that were drinking and it was like, they were far from cool. It was not, it was very stupid, you know? And I look at it with, you know, I look back on it going, well, I definitely learned from that. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that we have to talk about today and why we're talking about this today is is for the younger people to, you know, learn, don't do it. So that being well, said, you know, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just I was just going to say, when I think about young people, I think about it's like, you know, it's something that you just don't need it. You don't need it. It's it's highly overrated as far as the people that are presenting it to you and <laughs> watch watch their actions and watch the results that they get before you decide to partake in anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. What about, uh, what about this chip? So uh, what about now? Now you're a professional musician yes. and you are a professional drummer. You're out there doing mm -hmm. gigs, you're teaching, you're playing in church, you're writing books, you're doing videos, you're just being the best chip writer you can possibly be. But you still got to be around. You're in the music business, dude. You're around people that drink. Yeah, I'm and, around and it. Probably Absolutely. people that use drugs. Yeah. How was, do you deal with that? I was, I was about seven years clean and sober when I got off the cruise ship. And I went and started playing full time with the with the blues band. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were on tour and doing our thing. And I remember, you know, at late at night when everybody was drinking and doing their thing, it was like, who's going to drive us back to home from Phoenix? And it's like, oh, well, Chip's going to because Chip was the sober guy, you know what I mean? And I remember dealing with that and, and it was uncomfortable. It was, it was one of those things where it was just like, you know what, I gotta stay my course. I know the results of, of, what, of what drinking and imbibing would do to me. I know right. where that takes me. It takes me to a very dark and lonely place and I don't wanna go there. And so I would stay sober. I, I'd be the one that drove. Mm -hmm. That's great, that's great. I had, you know, because <clears throat> the way I dealt with it was I, I, I you know, I get that because I, I drove a lot, too. Um, I also um, when I when I quit drinking, I the temptation, I think, is there. But I think for me, the wanting to be a better person and and wanting to not be who I was before was stronger than the temptation to drink. So yeah. I went through, I went through a few months of, 
wow, this is, this is pretty rough. And it was physically painful. I got to say that it was very physically painful and mentally painful. I yeah. never understood that before people would talk about mental pain. I'm like, what are you talking about? But, but when you go through it, it's incredibly real and, uh, and it does suck. So another reason to stay away from it, but my temptation was, was not as my temptation to, to better my life was stronger. So I had to, I had, I had to put my resolve stronger than, than the, uh, than the, the booze or the, or the yeah. beer, you know? And, yeah. and still and, today, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, what are my goals? What am I looking at going for today? And, you know, drinking and drugs has nothing to do with that. It's not even on the radar today. Right. I, I live a completely different life than I used to live. And when I see it, when I, when I, when I deal with it, when I'm near it, like if I'm playing in a venue that serves alcohol, mm -hmm. that's fine. They do what they want. I have a neutral view because I've, yeah. I'm, I'm in recovery. You yeah. know what I mean? I've, I've recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Yeah. I've, I've recovered. So I'm, I faced a lot of different, you know, challenges over the years, but when it comes to the proposition of me doing that again, I've, I've recoil from it. I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. You know what I mean? I live a different life now and, and I'm very grateful for that. I've, yeah. It's all due to, due to my higher power and the support of my friends, which again, one of the main causes of addiction is isolation. When you're isolated and you don't reach out to people and you're not talking to people and you're not dealing with your feelings, that's slippery slope right there for addiction. That's, that's a bad place to be. And so one of the solutions for addiction one of the one of the solutions as far as getting somebody towards recovery is to get unisolated, to reach out from yourself, to reach out and make phone calls and talk to people and ask for help and engage in them and get involved in your own recovery. That's one of the solutions. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Let's talk about other and, and I don't want to uh, talk about other people in a gossiping way at all. I, but I, I want to say this, what, what, what if we talk about like our drumming heroes, let's say that we looked up to as players and we looked up to as songwriters and, and they um, had addiction issues and succumbed mm -hmm. to it. You know, let's, yeah. let's talk about that. Give us some examples of that chip. Talk to me. Well, a little one about one that. of the biggest names that comes to mind would be, would be John Bonham. You know, yep. losing losing him earlier because of alcoholism, and uh, that was just such a tremendous loss in the musical community. I can't imagine what could have happened, what kind of music we'd have if he was still alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I I I so agree with that. That was going to be the person that I talk about that I was going to say too. Because no, go ahead, talk about him. No, I mean, I, I think that I think that what he did was so uh, he's kind of like he's the due north, if you will, of, mm -hmm. of rock drummers. I mean, every I don't know a rock drummer that doesn't sit there and go, you know, the greatest rock drummer to ever live was John Bonham. It's either always John Bonham or Neil Peart. Right. And yeah. they're two different camps. But Neil Peart. But, yeah, uh, near Pute. Don't get that uh, wrong. Don't get that I, wrong. Man. I know, I know. Right there, I almost, I did, I did say Pert, didn't I? You know, there we go. Pert. Sorry, Pert. I, Pert. 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 Oh, Pert, eh? Because he's from Canada. Anyway, yeah, right. I, uh, most, people that, <laughs> most people that correct you on that are Canadian. Canadian, exactly. If Neil LaFortune's watching right now, I'm in trouble, right? Or Sharon Ransom. Right, so, <laughs> so but, but yeah, you know, um. Bonham, man, he would have, he was such an incredible force to be reckoned with. And, and he was, he was like a lot of us, you read stories, how he, you know, he thought he wasn't very good and he was going to give up and everything. And then you read the, you read the books, you read the, you know, I'm, I love reading rock and roll biographies. And I read one, you know, Stairway to Heaven and, uh, um, and Hammer of the Gods is another one. They're all such great Hammer books. Hammer of the Gods, that's the one I read. Yeah. And man, they, uh, you read the book and, um, you hear the stories and at first it's kind of funny, you know, you read the stories like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe, you know, that he, that he did that. And you have a chuckle about it. But when you think about it in real life, if you think about, okay, I'm on an airplane and this guy next to me does that, 
I, I don't give a damn who he is. I'm going to be pissed and mortified that, you know, you acted like that, you know, or, or if I put myself in that position, you know, so you, sometimes it's, it's romanticized, you know, it's, uh, you know, you talk about the who you talk about Keith Moon. I mean, my God, Keith Moon, you Keith listen Moon, to a who. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you listen to some of those drum parts. It's like an octopus playing the drums. And you read this, the, you hear the stories about how he took horse tranquilizers and passed out at, at the cow palace. And they got some guy to get up there and play the drums for a half of a song with them. And it's funny and everybody laughs at that. But if you put yourself in that real world situation, what, what that must have been like for Roger Daltrey and, and Pete Townsend and, and Int Whistle to sit up there and, and, and man, their drummer just passed out on stage and you got an arena full of people. You know, I mean, that's, that isn't cool. You know, that is not cool. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Those are, those are some of the issues. What about, what about other people? What do you think about, you know, other, give us some other ideas of addiction that you, that, that are in the business that come to mind. Well, you know, the, the most recent one I, I, I think would be obviously Taylor Hawkins. The, yeah. um, the situation with him, he had an overdose in 2006 and in Alanis Morissette's jagged little pill, there's a documentary where they basically deal with his addiction, you know what I mean? Where they, where they talk about it and it's very open and it's very, you know, public knowledge in that way. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, talk about a talent that we lost way too soon. He's definitely a, a, a loss to the music industry as, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah. And he, and that's, he was that's only, a horrible he, thing. He was only 50 years old, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, and 50 years old, I mean. You know, I don't know the exact cause of death, but I'm sure that they had something to do with chemicals. I'm I'm 100% sure. Yeah, yeah. And and it is, a, it is a huge loss. And, you know, not only for the music world, but again, think about it in a real life scenario. What about his wife? What about his kids? You know? Yeah. What you know? Who's who's gonna you know? Granted, the Foo Fighters they 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 did very well for themselves, and they, you know, the his wife will be continue to be paid on those royalties and 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 uh, uh, stuff like that. But hey, man, those concerts are over. Those royalties are gonna dwindle, and they got houses and cars and kids and all that sort of stuff. He left that behind, and that's that is so sad. And and then it the music bad. that he could have he could have created. So yeah. So and again, there's, there's, to, a, lot of, there's a lot of musicians and and re entertainers that are in recovery too, though. You oh know, yeah, there's a lot of people that have recovered. A lot of them have, you know, and and uh, quite a few of them come to mind. I'm personally not going to say their names, but because you know they have recovered, and it's not my place to to talk about it. But one of my favorite drummers uh, is Chip Ritter, and he's recovered. So you can talk about Chip Ritter, and he's recovered. And man, that dude's a badass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta go. I'm see sorry, Chip. I couldn't help it. Hey, man, you know what? Hey, Chip, you know what? We've been anointed with this technology. We, we have can, been. Uh, we and have we, been. We're enjoying it. <laughs> we're enjoying I, it. I have, I beat you to the punch, man. I beat you, you did, to the man. Punch. You got you it. Know. Yep, I got it that time. <laughs> but no, it, it's it's it is a you know for and so a minute ago when I said you know Taylor Hawkins, you know how old was he? He's fifty years old. Well, I know to younger kids out there or younger musicians. Uh, you know, well, 50, man, that's, you know, I'm not going to, you know, uh, that's, that's a lifetime away, but trust me when I tell you, it gets here like that. And 50 mm -hmm. isn't that old, especially if you, you know, if you eat a few salads and do a couple of push ups and, 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 and stuff like that, you can have a good long life. And, and it's yep. probably if you're, if you're doing drugs and booze and stuff like that, it's not, it's definitely not going to be as creative of a life. And it's, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's not going to be as rewarding. One of the things too, and I, and I, you know, again, not to talk about other people's issues, but I don't know if you've run into this, but I've, you know, I've watched many of my loved ones, you know, people who I really dearly, dearly, dearly care about, uh, maybe didn't succumb to, you know, dying from drugs or alcohol, but they, lost their ability to play they mm -hmm. lost their drive to play 
they blamed everybody around him. They had enablers around them, people that were, oh, it's okay. It's, it's not, you know, you know, they, they didn't have somebody as a support to try to help them and they're no longer playing or they're no longer, you know, if they are being creative, it's not nearly as good as what it it could be, you know? Um, what about that? Have you seen that chip? Yeah, I've seen that. I've, I've got a couple of people that I used to work with or used to be prominent in the music scene out here that, that are no longer doing it, that just, they just can't do it. They can't deal with it because their addiction is the highest priority in their life and nothing else matters. You know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, you see that, I think the, the, the thing that always, and this is, this is the heart, this is the hardest because when you're, when you're, it's really easy to point a finger and go, well, this and that and blame it, blame the problems on everybody else. But usually the problem has nothing to do with anybody else, you know? Yes. It's the, it's, you know, it's our own problem when we get in our own way and we cause our own problems. And, uh, and again, dealing with that in, in, within oneself and a lot of self-reflection goes a long way. You know, a little bit of self-reflection goes a long way, but a daily turn your life around, it really, really does, you know? Yeah. And when denial is a real thing, you know, when you're, when you're using and you're drinking and you're just constantly telling yourself, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. You know, that turns into your reality. You don't believe that you have a problem and right. and denial affects people around you too. They can be enabled, like you said, enablers mm-hmm. An enabler is somebody who helps or helps keep the addict or alcoholic using and drinking. You know what I mean? And they can be in denial too about the whole situation. Everybody can be in denial. Right. Right. And again, the situation only hurts the people. They're hurting themselves, but it hurts the people around them. And again, you know, I, I know in my life, I, you know, I disappointed people and, and I let people down and stuff like that. And, and that's, you know, thank God that's a, you know, that life is behind me and, uh, and everything, but, you know, it's, it, it is that looking at oneself. And well, going, look yeah. at, look at where you are now. Look at, look at all the good things that you're doing and all the, and all the help that you're giving other people. You're, you're a bright resource for many people, Bart. And <laughs> think about all the good stuff that you got going on right now. I mean, I, I think about that all the time. I write a gratitude list every day and I, I, I got so many things that I, I'm grateful for because yeah. I'm clean and sober, you right. know? Right. Well, Hey, on that note, if you don't mind me asking, how long have you been sober? 30 years. Good for you, man. On March Good. 22nd, 1992 was my, my, my last day. Good for you, man. That is fantastic. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Now, how, how did you, when you, uh, w- how did you go about it? What did you What did you do to get there? To get there, yeah. I reached out for help. I, I I called another man who had given me a card during an intervention that my mom did. Um, there was a there was this time where I was like, I, she said, "Hey, I want you to come to this dinner," and I was like, "I need I need twenty bucks for for marijuana." You know what I mean? But I told her it was for gas. I need twenty bucks for gas, and she said, "I'll give you the twenty bucks if you show up for this dinner." And I showed up to this dinner and they, they were, had this mom and, and her family, you know what I mean? My, my family. And then uh, this guy named Jeff and he was cutting a steak talking about his life as an addict and an alcoholic and how miserable his life used to be drinking and how being clean and sober is the greatest thing that's ever happened for him. And I felt, I sat there watching and listening and I felt so sad for the guy because I was like, being sober is the best thing about your life. What kind of life is that? that sucks. You know what I mean? I feel really bad for the guy. And then outside he gave me his business card and he said, give me a call when you ever get serious about not drinking, Mm -hmm. you know? And that was the card that I found that day. And that was the call that I made. And that's what started everything was reaching out and asking for help. And so since then it's been a program of, of honesty. It's been, it's been a, it's been a daily, daily effort to stay in meetings and stay in recovery and stay connected to people that, that are also sober, that also yeah. have problems dealing with life and can deal with it without drinking. You know what I mean? I've got numbers on my phone 
that I can just scroll and scroll and scroll and pick any one of these people and call them if I'm having a hard time. Or back then when I had a hard time, I had I got numbers from other people that he told me to get lists of numbers. And I had numbers on me that I could call anytime and talk about that. And that's really how I did it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's fantastic. One of the things that um, I also will say to young musicians out there uh, who might watch this, because um, I've I've you know I've seen this in my own personal life with people around me. When I quit drinking, when I hit my rock bottom, it was I didn't I did not go through a rehab. I had a great sponsor and. And like I said, mentally and physically, it was the most painful thing that I ever had gone through. But I, d- I did not go to a rehab, so I'm, I'm not speaking from a place of that. But I will say this. I think that a lot of times young musicians look at their heroes, if you will, uh, quote unquote, as when they hear the story of, oh, man, you know, so-and-so went to rehab and got sober and then he got out and went out on tour and got strung up again and went to rehab again. And you know, all this stuff that's, you're not supposed to do those things. You know, I mean, (laughs) rehab is not something to be romanticized. It's not so. And, and I think that that's what happens with the, with the drinking and drugs, you know, it's almost, it's almost like, you know, okay, you're, you're a real musician now because you've gone, it's part of the rock and roll fantasy, I guess, you know, I went through, <clears throat> I went through an addiction, I went to rehab and I got sober and I fell off the wagon. I went back to rehab, you know, and, and that's, it's part of the gig, you know, no, it's not, man. No, it's not. It's, no, I mean, it's if, not. if you have to, if you have to, because there are a lot of musicians out there and actors and, and people of just that, that are not in the entertainment business that have gone through rehab and got their lives together and done amazing things. Um, you know, but if you're a musician and you're looking up to that, if you're aspiring to that, don't aspire to that. Aspire to be the best player that you can be, to be best songwriter, you know, you know. How do you feel about that? What do you think when you when you hear something like that, Chip? When I hear somebody that's gone to rehab? Yeah, and, and maybe it's it's almost like talked about in the media as it's a almost like a badge of honor. What do you think of that? Do, yeah, or do you hear that? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I don't, I don't really get that too much. I don't get the uh, the romanticizing of it. I, I see what you're talking about. I understand what you're talking about. But for me personally, I don't look at it like something to aspire to. Um, I don't I don't think that um, I mean, Hollywood and movies, there's a lot of glamorizing drug use and alcohol. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fanfare that goes with that. And I can see that, you know, in our society, I mean, alcohol is basically a part of everything. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's a part of every sports event. It's all the way it's on advertisements are all over the place. And it's, it's, it's definitely glamorized. I can see that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 that's, yeah, I, I completely agree. And when I say it's romanticized or, or people aspire to it, I don't, I don't, I I don't mean it that people are aspiring to that. I just think that it's almost like a, a badge of honor. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like you get a merit badge or something for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And when, you know, when you're a young kid, maybe that's the, maybe not the dream of, oh yeah, I'm going to do this and become an alcoholic and get my merit badge because I went through it. No, stay away. How, and then, so on, on, on this subject, and I maybe already asked this question. So if I did, uh, I'm not trying to ask it a different way, but when you're on the gig and it's there and it's part of everything, and it's backstage, it's the bass players having a beer, you know, whatever. How do you personally, I know it's not part of your life anymore and you're, the temptation isn't there or isn't as strong, but how do you personally stay away from it? What do you do? I just make choices to focus on what I'm there for. I make sure that that's the priority. And, and you know, when somebody comes up and they buy the band a shot, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, hey, thank you, whatever. And I just hand it to the guitar player and they know yeah. they know how to dispose of it appropriately. Right. You know, I mean, they, I just do focus on what I'm there for, and I focus on the priority. You know what I mean? Get the gig done, go shake some hands, hang out with people, be sociable, and at the same time, I'm getting warmed up for the next set. Right. 
Yeah, exactly. That's how I deal with it. Yeah, that's that's what I do too. I I don't I don't really have the temptation of uh, anymore that oh I got to have the beer. You know, I I I bring a. a I bring a cooler and I drink those bubbly waters. I like cherry bubbly water. So I drink those right all the time. <laughs> That's I love like, those too. Yeah. So I, I bring those and uh, I drink those. And if somebody, hey, I bought the band a shot or I, you know, the other day at this gig that we did the other day, this guy, he, um, he made, uh, he made whiskeys and he did these smoked whiskeys whatever whatever that was. And everybody was bragging about it. So he brought up shots for everybody in the band He's like, okay, everybody have a shot. And then I was like, oh, no, 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 that's okay. Thanks. And I didn't say anything. He's like, no, come on, man, just taste it. See what you think. I'm, no, it's okay. I don't drink. And then usually as soon as you say that, people are like, oh, okay, I get yeah, it. Usually you know? people back off. Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while you'll have the one like, come on. But, you know, I mean. What Those guys drinking? are the ones that need to quit drinking. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so, yeah, now what about, now I never really, struggled with this um did you so if you you know and uh, what about drugs talk to me about drugs because that's that's yeah, something I, that's there I a was, lot i was i was addicted to drugs i i was like a garbage pail i would do anything that i could that would get me out of myself that would make me feel less fear or less horrible and so if you had any kind of substance like i did them all you name it i did them all wow you know yeah. I didn't get into heroin, but pretty much everything else I, I was I was addicted to. Wow. And it's it's the same. It's the same sick cycle. You don't think you have a problem. You just all you just need is more. If you just had more, you wouldn't have a problem. It's the same cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I remember, you know, ta you know, uh, you know, getting up in the morning and and if there was, you know, if I was on the road, if there was beer in the cooler or if there was beer at home in the refrigerator, okay, everything's cool. But if there wasn't, oh my gosh, you know, yeah, what's going to happen around 10? Yeah, there's a problem. I got to get to the store. I got, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, That's and again, no live, man, you don't want to live that way at all. You don't. I was and, it. it was like slavery. It was like I was a slave to the substance. And uh, I had to do what it wanted me to do. And, and there's no, that's no way to live. Yeah. And I think that, um, and again, you know, for young kids that are, that are, um, that are just new to the music business, I know it's really easy to think, well, you know, I'm 21 or I'm, you know, cause I didn't start drinking when I was 21, but you know, uh, way before that, but you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can do what I want. I'm an adult. I'm, I'm, I'm a you know, I'm a musician. I got to do it. It's part of the gig. You know, I can handle it. I'm going to be the different guy that I don't get addicted. And maybe you will, because I know a lot of people that, that, you know, they do drink responsibly as they say, or they don't have a, you know, they can just have one beer. I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day and he, he was joking about it. He's like, yeah, man, I, uh, he's, he's, he's in recovery and he's, he's quit drinking and got, got a little over a year sober and he had to go on a business trip, you know, and he was like, yeah, I had this guy that, that I was going with that he, he's not a drinker, but he's like, Hey, you know, I think I'm going to have a beer tonight. So he, he mm -hmm. ordered a beer and he, he drank about half of the beer and then he just left it there. <laughs> my buddy who's in recovery. Alcohol like, abuse right there. Yeah. 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 My, my buddy who's the, who's recovering alcoholic goes, the hell's wrong with this guy you don't drink half a beer and leave it there <laughs> he just didn't you know and he he, he 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 can laugh about it now but some people like that you know there are some people like that and there's a lot of musicians out there that are like that there's a you there's know? a whole world out there of people who can drink responsibly right exactly there's a whole world of people out there and that's again that's why it's a a huge thing yep exactly exactly so, so i'm talking about that yeah and definitely, definitely. We're so, talking about when when you can't drink responsibly, or if alcohol or drugs have ever caused a problem in your life. That's that's the that's the red flag. Have you ever had a student that has had a problem? Yeah, I have. I had a couple people that have had a problem, and uh, one of my students was was talking to me about that, and I gave him some numbers, I gave him my number. And helped him through some stuff. Good man. 
that's yeah. great. And so you probably help that person avoid a lot of pitfalls. Me and me and other people. Yeah. A lot of other people. That's fantastic. Now, what about, do you know anybody? And again, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't say names and stuff, I understand. I'll bring it, man. I don't care. What about, what about people who have, have had great careers in the music business who have been addicted, but have turned their life around and now they're sober. What, what, Give us some, do you have any examples of those that you want or can talk about? Or well, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know about any kind of programs, but I know that Eric Clapton doesn't drink or use drugs. Mm -hmm. And he's been, he's been clean and sober for a long time. I remember seeing him talk about it when he had 17 years. Yeah. And that was about 20 years ago. So that's a great example. Eminem is in recovery and uh, Elton John as well. Ronnie Wood. Yeah. Ronnie Wood. He, I mean, he once posts... you get to a certain stage and, and as artists, they've put that out there, they've already put that out there. So it's not like we're doing anything bad talking about them. I think that this, they're great examples. Oh yeah. I, that's, that's why I brought up Ronnie Wood. I think Ronnie Wood, um, cause he posts the thing on, uh, he has like a video that he does every once in a while on Facebook that I'll see. And he's, you know, reading something out of a daily affirmation book or, or what mm -hmm. have you. And he's talking about being sober and being in the music business and stuff. And come on, he's in the Rolling Stones, you know, yeah. who's bigger than that. And the same thing with, with, uh, Elton John, he's, you know, Sir Elton John, you know, and he's, he's recovered. So I think that that's, you know, that's something that you that's something to aspire to and see the thing i mean come on if you if you're so messed up that you almost lose a career like that it's it's everybody nobody's not touchable from it you know yeah you know, yeah I, it's, a, it's a addiction is a horrible thing and there's solutions for it so reach out if you're having any kind of problem or any kind of difficulty in your life reach out and ask for help how do you know if you need help how do you, you know what's you help if there's a problem in your life related to it? Yeah. And you need, you need help if you can't control the amount that you do or you doing it every day. What are some of the signs of denial? Uh, some of the signs of denial. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. They're all in denial. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your friend, your friend is drinking and he wrecks his car. And then, you know what I mean? And you, you're, you're thinking to yourself, Hey, well, that's just normal. I mean, it was a wreck. It's fine. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever it's, those are the signs of denial. Denial. Yeah. I, that's a hard question. What are the signs of denial part? You know, I, I, it's, yeah, exactly. You know, your, 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 your buddy wrecks a car or you have, you know, I had a, uh, worked in a band one time, had a guy that was, uh, well, here's the sign of denial and 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 uh, also uh, enabling. Had a guy that uh, mm -hmm. you know we're getting ready to go on and play the show, you know, getting ready to introduce the band. Where's the guitar player? We go on in one minute. I don't know. Where is he? Haven't seen him. Walk up there and start playing. Five songs into the show, guitar player sheepishly walks on stage, puts on his guitar and starts playing. Came up with every excuse why he slept through the show and slept through part of it, blamed everybody but himself. And then people around him, oh, it's okay. And they laughed it off. You know, oh, that's funny. You slept through the first couple of songs. It's okay. There's a sign of denial in the music business. You know, there's... You know, for me, that's a, that, that was a big, 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 big. Yeah, that's a good sign of denial. Yeah, exactly. You know, well, you didn't knock on my door hard enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's, that's my, it's, it's, it's his fault that he didn't knock on your door hard enough to wake you up for the gig, you know, because you were passed out from whatever opiates yeah. you were doing, you know, come on. You so know, what's the solution, Bart? What's the solution to addiction? I think that exactly what you said, I think you've got to, first of all, recognize that you have a problem with it. And I think you have to be willing to face that the problem with it is you, 
that has the problem. It's not your friend or your wife or your buddy or your whatever. It's you that has the problem. And then like you said, I think it's, I think it's asking for help. I think it's asking, you know, it's calling Chip Ritter and Odin and saying, Chip, Odin, come over to my house, help me. You know, what do I do? You know, it's, it's that it's, it's, it is, it's asking for help and not being afraid and being brave enough to admit it. I mean, Hey, look, what were you and I talking about before we went on today? You know, we're scared to do this show because it's, it, you know, we're dealing with, with our, our job. My job is a drum is a drummer. I'm a drum teacher. I'm, you know, and I, and I deal with people and kids and, and, and you gotta, you know, I, I don't know that I wanted to come out and just talk about how I was an alcoholic and or I'm an alcoholic and I drank too much and I had to get a handle on it. I was scared. But that first time facing your fear in an AA meeting saying, look, I'm, an alcoholic and I need help. It's fearful. And that's, it's facing that fear, I think, you know? Yeah. And be, and being brave enough to talk about it and facing hopefully helping your fear them. And, and being honest about the situation. All right. Exactly. Being, being very honest about the situation and being realistic about yourself, being realistic that, Hey, you know, these, problems were my problems not the other person the other person yeah. didn't nobody nobody you know stood there with a gun to my head saying drink all those heinekens nobody ever did it you know not one person you know that yep. was me that was my fault so you know, facing that and i and i do think talking about it don't you yeah talking about it's the best thing it's the only disease that can be talked to death <laughs> right right yeah. Well, Chip, I'm proud of you and I'm proud, I'm of, proud of you, Bart. Well, thanks, man. And congratulations, you know. Thank I mean, you. it's a heavy thing. It's a good thing. It is. It's very you heavy. Sober. It's it's possible to live without drugs and alcohol and to have a great life. Well, I'm a, you know, the yeah, and where wh I look at where my life was 4 years ago and where it is now, you know, I came <laughs> this close to, you know, m my wife is my, is my best friend and we've been together for 30 years and I, you know, I, I, I don't know what I'd do without her, you know? And, yeah. and I've, I have, I daily, I go through different, things just to you know to to be a better person for her because yeah. of the pain that i put her through you know um and i want to do this for me I, I i have to do this for me but at the same time i i don't you know i don't want to hurt the people around me anymore i don't want to let the the people around me down yeah. i just don't you know that's that's not what I want to do anymore. So, and again, yeah, being brave enough to talk about it and deal with it—that's a that's a big deal, man. It really is, really is. And that's I, and so I think, in a nutshell, talking about this on Drummers Education Connection. Why in the heck would we be talking about this on Drummers Education Connection? Well, this is educational. Now, when you think about drummers like John Bonham, like Keith Moon, like Taylor Hawkins, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, the people that had unbelievably good careers that were cut short by addiction and alcoholism. And they imagine what they could have been. Imagine what, imagine what the record after in through the outdoor would have been like for Led Zeppelin. Imagine yeah. the next who record. What what would the what 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 were the what was the what were the Foo Fighters going to do next? What what how good would that album have been? You know, yeah. you know. So if you're a young musician, because we have other musicians that follow us on this page, other than just drummers, if you need help, get it. The most important Reach thing. Out reach out get help you can dm me anytime you can find me and dm me and i'll give you my number exactly me too 100 percent. and and get yourself through it get yourself sober if you think you have a problem if you're questioning it you probably do and 
you know, if you're, if you're laughing yeah. it off, like it's okay, it's probably not because the people that are closest to you, who you love the most are the ones that you're disappointing the most and letting down and hurting and stuff like that, you know? And, uh, I think it's okay to self isolate if you're going to sit in a room by yourself and play drums for, for a couple of hours, but you know, not if, because you're depressed and life isn't going well and you're hiding in a bottle, right, Chip? Yep, you're right. Exactly. All right, guys. I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Chip, you got anything you want to add? No, to I think I think that's I think we covered a lot, and it was a good time for me to be able to be able to talk about it. But I hope it helps somebody. I hope it can lead somebody to reach out and ask for help if they need it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that and uh, totally. And uh, speaking of reaching out, I want to, if, if Jeremy's watching this, Jeremy, I hope you're uh, feeling better soon and you're, 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 you're killing the Rona. The Rona is leaving you. And, uh, and Rick, um, you're, I think he gets home today. So we'll see him next week. Miss you, on, Jeremy. Miss you, yeah. Rick. Yeah. We miss you guys. But we'll see you next week. And Chip, you are a man among men. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Bart. I appreciate it. Thank oh, you. I'll see you way up. Got it there. Got it right that time. Point... <laughs> All go. right. I don't think we have anybody scheduled for next week. Um, so we'll see I'm not... you online. Yeah, we'll 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 be up here. We'll be here next week. And yeah, if any if anybody out there is dealing with stuff, uh, that they're you know what. I want to close with this. I want to close with this, actually. I want to say this before we go. So this is, and this isn't an addiction thing, but this is, you never know when you're going to help somebody, right? You never know. Some Sometimes a small thing can help somebody in a big way. Uh, we had a sound guy that we'd uh, been touring with for a long time. Uh, he lives out in your neck of the woods, Chip. He's out in the Phoenix area. He works for okay. Tad Inter works for Tad Entertainment. That's a, a production company that puts us on the road and puts us to work a lot. We're very thankful for that. And his girlfriend had some uh, issues she was dealing with with cancer. And uh, so I belong to this thing that Chip Ritter turned me on to called the Snare Prayer Group. Prayer right? Snare. A prayer Snare with with uh, David Betts, right? Yeah. 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 And so I have uh, on my Black Beauty that I tour with, I uh, um, write all the people's name on that snare drum who I like to say a prayer for when I'm playing my drum and I think about while I'm doing a show. And so at the end of this tour that we did uh, in in Arizona a few weeks ago, we had like six shows at some, uh, it, was, it was about a month ago. Uh, we had six shows that we did across Arizona uh, Phoenix, Tucson, Scottsdale area at different performing arts centers and casinos. And uh, uh, Steve was our sound guy through the whole tour. And I told him about the snare drum. And I said, you you and your girlfriend are going through some stuff. So write your name on the snare drum head, which he did. And then uh, he asked me to send him a picture of it. And I forgot the other day I hadn't played that drum in a while, took it out of the case. Oh, I got to send Steve that picture. I sent it to him. He got back in touch with me right away. And uh, he was very thankful for that and uh, that I uh, that helped him. So maybe this isn't an, necessarily an addiction thing, but sometimes little gestures like that, whether it be with an addiction thing or a cancer thing or something like that, the smallest thing can mean the biggest thing to people. So don't forget to be kind and to help people around you because things yeah. like that do help you know they really do it means a lot to people so yeah you got you got addiction which is isolation and then the solution comes from connection right. so connecting out is the solution exactly exactly so okay guys that's it chip right, and i have babbled guys. enough we'll see you guys next week have a fantastic week we'll see you next week on deck thank you